What it do? How y'all doing? We're doing, We're doing great. Good. I'm trying to get this camera set up. This little camera situation. Yeah. We don't have that much. I don't have that much battery on my phone. You said you don't have that much battery. I got like 22%. Now, why do you come over here with this 20%? Wait, no, it's all good. It's all good. We're going to make it rock out. It's going to be good, but it's going to last. If not, we're going on my lives. I think it'll be good. I think it'll be fine. It'll be good. He got enough. Because I be on the phone when it's like on 1%. Me I too. I'll be on the phone for like 30 more minutes. Last three hours. Okay. Not my, not my phone. I gotta, I gotta upgrade my phone, but I don't really be caring about it. So. I know, right? Because all I need to do is call and text. I don't need all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. Let me get. I like that background with the graffiti. It sounds I appreciate You stupid. He's going to claim it. He's going to claim it. <laughs> I feel like so how do I sound? No, it's it's straight. It's good. You okay. better get started before it's time. Girl. You know, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Cornell. Okay. <laughs> I cannot. All right, y'all. So, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Happy Valentine's yes. Day. I'm going to say happy Welcome. Valentine's Day to all the people that is, uh, that's on the chat right now. Oh, I know. The chat moving quick. Hey, y'all. Hey y'all. Yeah, exactly. Welcome. So, <laughs> we literally... wanted to get quicker. Huh? <laughs> we wanted to get quicker on here. Come on, y'all. Log in, log in. What's up? I what know. You but you know, Let's Mr. Carnell said it's time, so we got to get started. It's time to get started, son. <laughs> she act like we going to get a whooping or something. Okay, so y'all know Valentine's Day is like literally like my favorite holiday outside of Christmas. Because I just love love. Like, love is the best thing. So this topic, manifesting love, is, like, the best. So today I have the privilege of interviewing two amazing people, um, Carnell Honeycutt of the R&B group B5 and his beautiful wifey, Desiree Honeycutt. I like that. Hey, y'all. <laughs> so how y'all doing today? How was y'all Valentine's Day going? It's going, it's going good. great. It's going good. Honestly, no. we we enjoy like the chill the chill days. That's that's a great Valentine's Day for us. So that's Aww. what we did. We had a good chill day. Any surprises? Did y'all do anything cute? So <laughs> huh? what? Did y'all do any get any surprises? Did y'all do anything cute? Oh yeah, today? we did all that. We did. We did all we that. We did. You know the whole nine. What they talking about? Flowers, all that I good mean, stuff. All that stuff is the same old stuff. <laughs> it's like you know, it's we gonna take a trip next time, but yeah. this time we just chill really. So it's it's what we needed. <laughs> <laughs> what you say, Desiree? Ashton on there. Aoki's on here too, watching us. Aoki, <laughs> hey, hey, my boo. <laughs> so I want to say thank y'all for joining me on such a very important couple holiday. You know, couples deserve this for themselves. So I don't take it lightly that y'all want to sit here and talk to me for an hour um, on your Valentine's Day. So um, Desiree is actually my childhood best friend. We live in the same neighborhood up the street from each other. And I've known Desiree for almost 20 years. Wow. And I've known Carnell for 15 years. Yeah, I've known Carnell for 15 years. Oh, my God. That's <laughs> so probably, like, almost probably like 14. 14. 14. 14. So close, yeah. yeah. I was trying to do some quick math in my head. <laughs> you were close. You were close. <laughs> close. Yeah, that was a, that's a long time for real. Mm -hmm. about it. So I heard Valentine's Day isn't what it's cracked up to be when you're married. Um, <laughs> is this true? I think it's, you want to answer first? Uh, I can answer um, after like, probably like, maybe about like six, seven years in, it's not, it's not, you know what it's cracked up to be mm -hmm. in a sense but honestly probably even before then it, it all depends on like um we got different views no it, i feel like no we do have we do have different views but i'm just saying that like it becomes beyond just okay it's valentine's day you got to do this you got to do that we got to do this you got to do that you know it's mm -hmm. like you know we've been together for so long that it's just you know I feel like it, it for us that you know it doesn't really that's not like the end all be all type of situation. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of couples base that all oh 
I'm I'm breaking up with my girl or something like that on, on Valentine's Day because I ain't trying to get this, I ain't trying to do that or whatever. You know, it's just some people upplay it too like too much and they expect that over like real genuine love because it becomes like no love when you just expect to get you just expect some flowers, you know. And then the girls always expect that it just becomes cliche. And right. then it's like, you know, it's just a lot of different things, I, I would say. I think it just depends on the couple. And I also, I think it depends on the person. Like, for example, like like I said, we got two different views. Carnell, he's not really the type that like likes holidays in general. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He really don't. Um, me, I like holidays. I'm more, I mean, I'm more of a Christmas girl, but <laughs> like my birthday falls two days before Valentine's Day. So right. it never really stood out to me in a way of like, oh, it's a whole separate day for my birthday. I always kind of like got Valentine's Day and my birthday together. Yeah, we kind of, so, yeah, we've, I've always done that. I've always did the Valentine's Day, you know, her birthday and Valentine's Day together mm -hmm. because it's like, it's right there, you know? <clears throat> and it's just like, it's like with my birthday. My birthday is dang near on Thanksgiving, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just like people are too fatuated with Thanksgiving and Christmas. So right. I'm kind of like in that middle where I'm just but I'm kind of stuck, you know? I'm kind of stuck in the middle of that. But so. Valentine's for me, I, I think definitely is, I mean, it depends. I feel like it, How do you feel say, combining the two? Huh? How do, we How do you on? feel combining those two holidays together? What uh like so he says his birthday is close to Thanksgiving and then your oh. birthday is close to Valentine's Day. Do you feel a way when people combine your gifts? Mm mm. I really honestly don't. I feel like we're so used to, we're so used to our normal that we're just mm -hmm. kind of like this is what it is and mm -hmm. as long as we're happy around that time that's what matters. Like it's the simple things for me. So okay. So now tell everybody how how long y'all been dating and how long y'all been married. How long have y'all been together and how long have y'all been married? So we'll be together for 14 years coming this April. Okay. And we have been married now for going on 12 years in August of this year. Okay. So wow. we got married in 2011. Yeah. And, and for, for those, like, this, we never talked big on this stuff because we were very private. And plus, like, coming, our relationship together started when they were, like, in really in it like with like um kind of fresh out of bad boy and everything so it was kind of like they were still running off that same so, yeah. like can't talk so, about so girlfriends basic, yeah. and can't talk about right. husbands, basic, like, so basic. can't be public so it was like all right well, <laughs> yeah. so basically yeah so basically um you know even not even to this day but like we're, I'm still kind of private about that just because it's my comfort. I don't yeah, need to I have like certain things, but I don't need to have everybody else in it and be like, oh, this, this, and that, and that person. In it. And I just don't like that. You know, it's just. But we're going through that too. But though. we're going through. We're through. going through that because you're supposed to not. First of all, you can't live and care too much about what people I have know. to say. So. We're, so we're, yeah, yeah. Finish what I'm saying. I'm, I'm trying to help you. I'm backing you up. But when you're but in the anyways. spotlight. You no, certain things I'm, what I'm just saying is that, like, you're not, you know, in the sense that, like, you know, I don't care as much to, you know, to be that way, you know? Like, uh -huh. it took a lot out of me to just be expressive or, you know, post or whatever, because, you know, I wasn't used to that. I wasn't brought up that way. Right. When, we came, when B5 that came out, you know, we came out in that time where you got to be exclusive. You got to be, you know, mm -hmm. you know, he can't be shown that you got a girl mm -hmm. or anything like that. You right. got to be sell, you got to be marketable. You got to be this and got to be that. And we got media training doing that. So that's what kind of like brought us into that character. And it's like, and I always, we always felt like at that time, you know, being that era, it's like, oh man, if you promote, we got girls and all that stuff. we man, these girls ain't going to follow us no more, you know? Right. And that's gonna do all this stuff. I mean, and it happened. You know, it mm -hmm. does happen still to this day. But mm -hmm. the thing is that, like, people are going to rock with you if they rock with you or not. Exactly. They just can't give a fuck about it. That's what I'm going to say on that. I know I curse, but, you and know, we grown. We grown. We grown. So, it's like, <laughs> so, you know, you just yeah. don't have, you can't care about it. Because, it's like, everybody else is, you know, doing their thing, you know. So, it's just like, who cares, you know. I understand that. Somebody put in the comments, um, they would have been devastated to know as teens. And if you think about, like, 14 years ago, like I said, when y'all started, yeah. Yeah. Thinking, it would have been devastating. Yeah, and, just, I, and I understood that when we were young, like, when we yeah. got better. Like, I mean, shoot, like, I understand that. So you also don't want to take that, like, you don't want to take that away from their group either, like, 
you don't, you know, that was, okay, we were teenagers. So in that time, you don't want to like crush nobody's heart. And I get, I get all that. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like, you know, I didn't understand. Um, I have really adapted to it. That's why now that we're even vlogging and stuff, it's like, uh -huh. we're really doing this. Like, we're really out here, like, just being ourselves right now. And it feels good, though. It, it feels good to just live your life, you know, mm -hmm. instead of hiding all the time or feeling like something has to be super, like, you know, old, like nobody can do yeah, that. Realistically, like, anybody that's super exclusive, they don't, it's not marketable in this today's society, mm -hmm. you know? Right being like that you're like oh i can't show this i can't show that then realistically you're lame you're not really being exposed no one right. no one really gives a shit mm -hmm. and um you know you gotta really just really put yourself out there for for just like you know to be marketable in this in today's society you can't be exclusive because i mean it's lame you know even the top people right now i would still say it's lame how they act you know oh i can't be shown because of you know, I'm this and that. Like, you're human at the end of the day. You piss, you Think shit. about it like this. The new generation's not on that way. We're, we, are, we are evolving. The new generation runs like, that way. Runs the music industry. Yeah. The new generation is running everything. Like we're you got evolving. These, you got the old heads that still try to hold it together and try to be those people. But it's really ran by, you know, by this young generation. That's yeah. true. That's true. So I see a few comments. Um, life before y'all got together and how y'all met. But I just want to, I want to plug something real quick, Desiree, because I don't know if you remember this. It was Valentine's Day, actually, when I met you, Desiree. And it was I was in seventh grade, and we was on a bus ride at home. And I don't know, I feel like I was dating this little boy or something, and he, like, dumped me on Valentine's Day or something. And I was on the bus all sad, and somebody random gave you a teddy bear. And you was like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, I don't know. I never got anything for Valentine's Day. And you were like, here, you can have this. And you gave oh, me your teddy bear. Oh, yeah. I, I think I remember that. I think I remember that. And they were like, do you remember that? I feel like, I think I might remember something like that, because I know there's so many different, like, bus rides <laughs> with us. I know. <laughs> but that sounds like something I did. Like, dang, I'm yes. mom and, and I was like, yeah. I told my parents, and they were like, oh, that's Miss Tracy's granddaughter. And, you know, still to this day, you and Angel are the only two people whose houses I've ever spent the night at. My parents don't uh, like that. You know, exactly. If it's no horse, you're not going. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yes, but, but we yeah. met on Valentine's Day, which is funny that I'm interviewing y'all on Valentine's Day. Yeah, that is crazy. And and even for like people asking like for like we met or whatever, you know, um, there's a lot of backstory for that. Um, just even so, yes, like I was and still I still am a B five fan. Oh, okay. he was. We Let's was take away life, from, honey. You know, was. I still am. I still go hard for them. Um, but so, and Shay knows this because she, well, she surprised. has seen it all. She's seen it all. Y'all, I was a real, like, I was hardcore fan. And, and, and this is something that honestly, like, I wouldn't be able to feel like comfortable talking about before because it felt like, oh, you know how many, like, judgments or things you would hear about you? Like, you're a groupie or this a gold digger all kinds of things you're gonna hear but it's like first of all i know my heart and i know that's not me right so let's get that out the picture mm -hmm. but we i was i was sure got to live every fan's dream oh my <laughs> god really like, <laughs> let me tell you I'm, oh, I'm gonna say i'm gonna say one thing right now everybody around desiree i'm not, I'm not gonna include you shake because i ain't trying to expose you man, like that <laughs> yeah I'm not, not in that way. I'm just saying, like, everyone around Desiree has asked or look up to Desiree, like, how'd you do it, girl? I'm looking for my, I'm looking for my favorite celebrity. Me, bro? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get with Chris Brown, so what's the, what, what I gotta do? I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to do I'm that. Like, I'm trying to do that. Listen, you know, I'm gonna like, tell y'all how we met then. So, um, well, this is before, like, me. Well, tell me more about before. Oh, before. Okay. Oh, before. I mean, before, like. I'm going to hold it a little bit. Your yeah, hand yeah. is, like, it's like you're holding it the way Before, I mean, neck. before we even got to work together, I was, um, I was a young little jit, you know, and. Um, so, and, were you, um, like, dating, like, as a young, because well, how old were we, like. like yeah, I, I mean, I, I was really first. Okay, so. I wasn't, like, a big. Let's put, like. really big dating like that, you know. I was very, very small for my age. Um, I came out, we came out when I was like 14 years old, mm -hmm. but uh, really the video, all I do came out when I was 15. 
and but I had thunder when I was 14. I was the same size. Like I just didn't grow like that. And so it was just like I it took me a long time to really hit puberty, you know? So I was like, like, yo, I'm not really interested in girls like that because I'm like, I feel like I'm not even a I'm full on like living a teenager's dream, you know? I was right. I looked like I was 12 years old, so it was easy for me to pass as a young little boy because I'm like, man, I used to always think about like, man, man, everyone around me hitting puberty and look at me and Brian hitting puberty at the same time because it took me so long to hit puberty. I'm like, yo, like what's going on? Like, but so I just wasn't really a big dater. And so when I started dating, it's like, I was dating quick. Like I was going, not like going through girls like, like that, but I was just like, I was just, you know, having my fun, you know, I just didn't really have that experience. And so, you know, when it came to Desiree, we were always friends. We were friends like way back in the very beginning, when the, when like the, the beginning of my space. space 16. Yes. When I was like 15, 16 years old, you know, so um, we just talked. But, that you know, gives was, into the story of how we really started. Yeah, even, like, talking. We, wasn't, we wasn't like, we was just talking, you know, we wasn't really dating. I was dating other girls. She had uh, other dudes, you know, and so it was just like, at a certain point, you know, we just got together, but she can she can explain that. Yeah. So back to orchestra right. class when we were in orchestra. <laughs> oh, okay, orchestra class. So, okay, so being a big B five fan, this was their era. Like this was the heavy B five days. Okay, so um, this was around the time. Honestly, you know what? Y'all were hot during the time that movie ATL came out too, because I remember yes. all this intertwined. Like we yes. had the soundtrack to ATL. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> we was and we so we were in orchestra class, me and Shay together, Dance. and we actually um, went to Atlanta as our orchestra class. We played. To, at, did we play at Six Flags? It, um, we played, it we was somewhere. We played like somewhere. We did two things, I think. But we went and we did like a whole challenge, whatever. We won like first or second, something like that. Um, because I wasn't worried about orchestra. I was worried about getting. We was trying to find. <laughs> We were on a mission. I was like, oh, people live there. So we like, it was just so fun because me and Shay, we had a hotel, we shared hotel room and it was like, we know we couldn't go anywhere. We all rode a bus together and we were like, so how are we going to get to where B5 is at? Like, we sitting here contemplating. I'm telling you, it was like that serious, okay? Mm -hmm. It was that serious. They probably weren't even in Atlanta at the time. They're probably somewhere traveling. <laughs> but anyway, no, it was that serious. So, so I was like a diehard fan. Um, and then MySpace came out. And um, probably not too long after MySpace uh, my started. Got so. OK, but y'all got on there around the time y'all were about to drop you all second project. No, we didn't. Yes, you did. You we weren't there on the first project. You on got, MySpace? Yes, you got it on one. Because I remember like right <laughs> so when you got first on project, there. We were, on, we were already on MySpace. Well, my, you know, we we my, had the yes. parents, so we probably wasn't on it as early as that. No, like yeah. my friend uh, Raven, child to Raven, uh -huh. she goes by Roxy, but um, she's the one that made me my MySpace. She made it in 2004. So we had it right in the end of 2004 to 2005. I've had my, I had MySpace. That's when I first had MySpace and she started talking to me around 2005, like around mm -hmm. mid 2005, almost 2006. Mm -hmm. And um, no, I don't see who's got the five. I, I remember, but um, yeah, that's how it kind of started. She wrote me a long essay, basically. You know, we don't got to talk about the essay, but just know it had said a lot of stuff. Okay, this is where we're gonna get into like the manifestation of love. Let me tell you something. So people look at this and think that's crazy, right? Like, okay. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm such a big manifester. Like, I promise you, like. When I speak things and I, I dwell on it, like, it happens. And I just always believed what I wanted and, and I knew I would get it because I, I told myself I, what I want, I'm going to get. And you just have to kind of like, you got to, it was a lot. I prayed on it. So, okay? hold on. Since you, since you brought that up, I just want to share what manifesting, what manifesting love is. So, love is an intense feeling or deep affection for someone and the word manifest manifestation means to create something or turn something from an idea to a reality. Mm -hmm. So that's why the title of this podcast is called Manifesting Love, because a lot of us are looking for that thing and we're able 
And and like you said, you prayed for it. Some people believe in manifesting or you pray for it, but there you go. I just wanted to let people know what yeah, I yeah. love no, is. Like, like seriously, that's what it is. And like I literally dwelled <laughs> on this. You turned it into a reality. I will <laughs> sit there and record everything that they did on TV. I don't know what happened to those VHS tapes because that was VHS was popping, right? We didn't have no other way. It was VHS. Yes. I press record on the thing and, and I didn't miss anything, okay? And I would watch that every night, like, my God, like, okay, and I was turned, a crazy fan, and I was a teenager, so I'm not, um, we can move over here with this charger. So, basically, I, um, I wrote them on MySpace, did that message, and guess what, my grandma still has that somewhere, okay, because I wrote it down on paper before I even, <laughs> I wrote it on paper before I even sent it to him. Mm -hmm. So, and he wrote me back, which, it, it, it was crazy to me. Cause he actually was like, and all he said was, "Aw, that's so sweet." <laughs> and I flipped out. And then I remember being like, um, "This is when AIM was popping." If y'all remember yes. AOL Instant Messenger, this is when mm -hmm. that was in. So I knew he had it because I seen in his comments his friends being like, "Get on AIM, log in." And he yes. and, I, and I wrote him. I said, "What's your, you know, what's your screen name?" And he said, "I'm sorry, I don't have, I don't have AOL Instant Messenger." I said, "Yes, you do, because people in your comments are saying get on." And so he was like, he he like it took you probably did like two days before he wrote me back, but he was like, "Give me your screen name." So I gave him mine, and then like the next night, I'm literally, I'm I was always on, but like I just was waiting. I'm like, is he gonna actually hit me up? And I saw this name pop up. It was probably something. It was weird. Something. Uh, something. Something no, robotic. No, it's like bad boy for life. Oh, bad boy for life. Okay, so it <laughs> popped up and 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 I was like, and it said sup, and I was like, oh my god, I just know it's him. So I was like, so we been writing each other, or whatever. He's like, it's me, uh, it's Carnell, but don't give this to anybody. And I'm like, oh god. So I I didn't. We talked on AOL for a long time, um, and then it didn't until what 2008 was when we no 2009 was when we met up. Yeah. It was 2009. I remember that. We started, okay, so maybe it was a top of the two. I'm being, oh my God, my brain. Her brain is all. Oh my God. She got mom brain. Brain oh my God. She got mom brain, so she didn't remember a whole bunch of stuff. But um, yeah, it was around uh, maybe. I it was 2009. It was 2009 for sure. It wasn't in the beginning of 2009. I think it was probably. I remember it was after. Almost, like, almost like three, three, like, four, maybe three or four months. Yeah. In 2009, so. Mm -hmm. And that's, now, yeah. Now you tell them how we met. Actually, like I went to concerts and stuff. Oh, how we it was not like you know the actual meeting, like meeting meeting. Yeah, how how we met was um, I was in Orlando, and um, just doing some stuff. You know, we were um, probably um, just uh, separating from you know people and managers, not managers, but like you know labels and. Uh, production deals and stuff like that at the time and we was just basically shopping around see if we were going to reside back in Orlando you know because when we first started we started in um like really started it was like St. Petersburg order uh-huh charging mm -hmm. sorry I'm trying, I'm trying to charge the phone I don't have much I'm to hit up the other yeah. there it goes oh <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> don't have much uh battery so I'm trying to like it's that cord well, it shouldn't be, but hey, it okay, but yeah, um, I was in Orlando, and then I was really bored, and then like <laughs> he said, I was really he bored. Was bored and thought of me like, oh, okay. I was really bored, and I was like, dang, who did I know here? And then, and then like her name popped in my head, and I was like, oh, let me hit her up. Come you on, know? God, you gotta put those names in his head. <laughs> Yeah, literally, that's how it like, kind of was. It was kind of like Desiree. And I was like, oh, shoot. Okay, I guess I'll hit her up then. And, I was like, and so I wrote her, you know, and she was just like, oh, you know, she made up this story that, like, she was coming, but she really wasn't coming. She was, she like, was get it was too late. It was too late at the time. And so she was just like, oh, yeah. And I told her, I was like, yo, if it's meant to be, I was like, yo, if it's meant to be, we'll see each other. You know, if it's not, you know, then it just won't be. You know, I wasn't really, like, really pushing it. But then, you know, she was able to make it out the next day because honestly, we was gonna leave. I think either that day or whatever. But she still happened to come, so we we hung out. You know, we chilled. We got to know each other, and it felt like it was like if we've already done this before. Like we've known, each <laughs> like we known each other like, before. And yeah. I had told her that even then. I was like 18 years old. I was like, "Yo, it was like we've already done this before. Like I feel like I, 
you know, known you for a long time. Keep in mind, I was with somebody at the time. Ooh. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying that that's just how everything goes. But like, I'm gonna be. I'll be 100. percent I was with another girl at the time. You know. And um, I'm being 100. percent We didn't do anything. You know, we didn't do anything. <laughs> Make it plain. You know, <laughs> what you looking at me like that for? No, I'm not. I'm not looking at you like that. But I'm just saying, like, you know, I was at a girl, a girl at the time, and I broke up with this girl because of, you know, whatever reasons. You know, I may have my immature reasons, but like, you know, my heart was in the right place at the time. You know, and um, and then we just started seeing each other often. And then you know, I was just like, you know what? Everyone, I said it because I was young. I was like, everyone thinks you're like you're my girl, so you might we might as well just make it official, you know. And then that's how that happened. And then you know. So, Carnell, I, being that you met a lot of people, a lot of fans who were here, who were there, what stood out about Desiree that made you know that she was the one? Um, she was real for one. A lot of the, the girls I thought were real were always fake fake MySpace girls. I'm like, damn. It was like the age of girls catfish, po like of catfish. Every girl, every girl was like, you know, uh, not real. So I was like, yo, what the hell? You know, <laughs> and I had like one one girl. That's where I was like the only real person on my top. On my, my top. Wow. So I was like, okay, well, I got all these fake girls. You know, obviously I met girls in person, you know, and stuff like that, but you know, I was very like different. You know, I was a very like shy type person. So, um, you know, it, her and me, her just matched together. You know, and it was the fact that it was con the consistency of me actually seeing her. Because most of my relationships were always long distance relationships, mm -hmm. and they don't those don't really last that long. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was the fact that she was there. You know, and um, we had a. She's like the complete. Like she's like the opposite of me, the polar opposite of me, and like I'm into signs and all that stuff, like in astrology, and so like Sagittarius and Aquarius are very known big matches to mm -hmm. with each other, you know. Mm -hmm. And so like she is like me, but in in a uh, you know in a woman form. So it just made sense, you know. Oh, that's <clears throat> and 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 she's real, you know. Like she's not she's not a uh, ass kisser, you know. I don't like ass kissing type people that like you can tell it just comes off fake, you know. Mm -hmm. but, and so she would give me the real, you know. She gives me the real and kept me actually relevant within like you know reality of you know social media and everything else, you know. Otherwise, I don't think I would be have been as real when it came to social media and you know expressive as a as a person as an individual. So right, right, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So, Desiree, before, around the time when you guys met, what were kind of, like, the steps that you took to manifest your love? Like, what was the steps you took to get it, and then when you got it, to stay sane? Oh, no, well, I guess I'll stay with the first question. What were the steps you took to manifest your love? Okay. Um, I would say, all right, honestly, I prayed on it. I wrote it. I wrote things down a lot. I'm a big manifester that believes in writing things down on paper. You can write stuff in your phone, but it's not the same. It got to be in handwriting. You got to take your time out to use your hand and your head, like, write. Like, keep those papers, too. My grandma still got those papers somewhere in the attic. Like, I agree. It's crazy. Like, but honestly, like, and it's not even on no, cra like, this sounds crazy probably to a lot of people. Like, this sounds just nuts. This girl's nuts. It's just, I do this with everything I want, though. This is not just, here's the thing. Even when I prayed on this, I prayed, like, okay, yes, like, obviously, I was a fan. Oh, my God. God, I want to be with the same prayer else. everybody but, <laughs> Right. But I always said, but if not him, you know, obviously, somebody who is going to be, like, the right person for me that makes sense for me and, um, you know, just everything that I need in a man. That's what I prayed for. And and I got that not only with I got the person and he is exactly what I wanted in a man. Just Carnell is not like a lot of people in this world, which is like he's probably not even human at this point, to be honest with you. Okay. Like he's really 
he's a really good person but like he's yeah. different he has his like ways people are always laughing at him because like everybody says like he's so blunt and different that's just like okay carnell like mm -hmm. but it's just his personality and it's so it's so him and it's so unique and everything about that to me is something i love because i don't like anything regular yeah i like something different about anything in my life like it's just more intriguing to have different things because i'm just like that but i definitely would say as far as the steps of manifestation yeah start writing things down anything i agree you know anything you want talk, you talk about prayer and um in habakkuk the bible says to write it down and make it plain and mm -hmm. i tell people that all the time because if you don't write out your prayers you don't see what prayers have been answered so the fact that your grandma keeps those journals and prayers i tell everyone to journal everything like, for everything. your things that you want in a husband the people uh, those of us who don't have a husband i always tell people write down what you want in a man and like you said you got everything that you you actually prayed for god to give you the things that you needed in a man yes versus what you wanted and you actually got both what you wanted and what mm -hmm. you needed and that's because exactly you invested it. exactly yeah. And and not everything goes a certain way. Like it's okay for those that may still be waiting on that perfect one. That is okay. Because I feel like those that wait even for like you go through things with different people. That's a normal process in life until you find that one. Just know there's so many people in this world. But there's gonna be somebody that fits you like it like that person should. And when that happens, you will know it. And it's totally fine to find it later. Like, it doesn't have to be like, you know, some people get lonely. And they're like, dang, like, when am I going to find my significant other that makes mm -hmm. sense for me? Let it come when it comes. And, and you'll know. Okay. Like, you just have to allow it to be the right timing for you. You just got to allow it. Yes. And, and it's okay, you know? Yeah. We, we, learn, we learn through so much in life. And I feel like, especially those, like, that wait, you're going to get the, the best person for you. Tell that's me. true and you know i resonated with that because me and you had our own conversation because everybody out here talking about sierra's prayer and i'm like let's see what desiree prayed because i want to know what somebody i actually know somebody i know for real and i know the true love story i was there from the beginning i want to know what they was praying i need to go back Seriously. to and remember what we prayed mm -hmm. <laughs> i would say this too like don't get me wrong there are still ups and downs we've been together for so long but we had ups we have had downs and that was a growing process too we got together at 19 mm -hmm. and we are both now 33 mm -hmm. and 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 we had ups and downs like we even had a breakup in between like mm -hmm. it didn't last very long but we had a breakup and it was it still happened things happen right. but now i feel like we honestly have been the most stable in our relationship these past two no probably the last two three years out of all those years, this has been the most stable in, in where it needs to be. So it's, it did take patience. That's why I say sometimes in certain relationships, you find yourself being like, oh, this ain't the one. Mm -mm. And sometimes you got to find yourself being patient with somebody or growing with them, especially if you're young. Mm -hmm. You got to understand there's a growth process with people, but you will know the people that are too toxic and you got to let go. Right. But you right. got to understand there's those that will grow through things. It depends what it is, you know? I always say that with people that I actually grew up together, not people that <clears throat> that are 20-some years old, 26 years old, and, you know, and still doing the same shit, you know? Yeah. It just all depends on, like, the only reason why I feel like we lasted as long is because we grew up together. If we didn't, you know, we would be in two totally different head spaces and everything. Like, right. Like, you know, you just, it's just not the same. And y'all mature together, too. Yeah, we mature together. We grew up together. We've seen each other grow up. That's the difference between people. You can't just hold on to something when this nigga's, like, 25, 26 years old. Or this female's, like, 25, 26 years old. You're like, oh, no, maybe one day. No, they're already set in their ways, so they're not right. going to change. That's so true. that's, don't get that mixed up, you know, because... This is ain't the the, uh, the picture that's painted. It's not always the picture for you or whoever. You know, everyone has their own you know uh, ways of being, and um, not everyone's the same. And that's the reason why, like, we can talk about this stuff all day when it comes to our relationship. But that's our relationship. Not everyone's gonna have the same relationship. Not everyone's gonna have a person like me to be like this down and be you know right. who I am as the individual or Desiree, vice versa. So. Mm -hmm. it's just, you can't look at us and expect the same thing to happen, you know? That's just being unrealistic. 
like even uh, me and her being together, that's like one out of like a million, you know. So it's very rare, and you know, we just have to understand that. So, how do you guys keep the flame alive? All right. <laughs> how do we keep the flame alive? Especially I with think... you guys being so young, because y'all been married 12, 12 years, but y'all only 33, and, you know, a lot of people don't even get married that young. So how have yeah. y'all got through with, you know, naysayers, outsiders? How do y'all do it? Um, I think, honestly, when it comes to the flame, it depends on the, the relationship you have with each other. Like, we, our flame is just the simple fact that we are, like, best friends. Mm -hmm. Like... We hold each other up in a different light than maybe some uh, somebody else might see their significant other. He is like family. Like, if he could be blood right now, he might as well be my blood because he is like family for real to me. And we are literally best friends. Our conversations. I think when you're super comfortable with somebody and like you can be yourself, that's when you grow that real like friendship with somebody. That to me is the flame that holds us together because all that, like, just that that type of relationship with each other alone makes everything else in your relationship better. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's yeah. not, it's not all about like just even just the romance. When you have that good friendship that even comes into play like that, that all that gets better and stays good because you, you look at each other in a way that you should always. And yes, even when you're mad at each other, it's like family. So it's like, we're going to get over this. We're just mad right now. You know? Who's saying something in the comments? What? Yeah, somebody was saying something, but I thought I'm <laughs> It's okay, I'm not worried. It's, it's, I don't they block. Don't come over here playing on my live because I'm going to okay. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. There, and then there's you gotta grow, like we said, you gotta, you gotta grow. grow. And that's exactly what I was asking. How do you keep naysayers out your relationship? Because the way I'm set up, I'd be done jump through the screen, girl. I don't know how you do it, but um. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that was a good answer. That was a good answer. So, yeah, in dealing, somebody asked on here, um, how are were you guys planning? How did you guys plan it? Start planning your family? Um, did it just happen on accident, or was it something that you guys planned out due to your careers? You know, don't want to like mess up your careers or stuff like that. Yeah. Well, um, our first. Uh, our first Aoki definitely was not planned. That was definitely something that was, you know, just happened. But it happened at the right time. You know, I believe all things are divine at its right time. Mm -hmm. And um, Aoki came and honestly changed our life, kept us together um, at a stronger level, um, and kept us moving forward. She taught us a lot. Aoki. The first child is always going to teach you a lot. You, know? you grow up, yeah. I think it, she taught us a lot, and, you know, she grew up with us when we was kids, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, the second one, Yumi, which is the most, one of the most craziest childs I've ever been around. <laughs> Literally. Um, we, we planned her. We planned mm -hmm. Yumi. Because I didn't want kids until, like, 27 years old. I didn't want to have kids early because of, you know, just didn't want well, that, did. you know? We, we, but it just so happened to be that way, and mm -hmm. then it just happened, you know? So, you know, and, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade either one of them for the world, you know? So. Yeah. I yeah. love the, um, I'm going to have to come visit because I feel like it's been a minute. It's been a minute. <laughs> it's been a minute. been a minute. Oh, it's been a minute. Oh, okay. Yes. But yeah, no, everything everything with love is all about pureness, I will say. Um, that's how you know when anything is real. Being authentic. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. you yeah. already, you'll know. Yeah, one thing I, oh, could, okay. one thing I, I could say Aww. about love, <laughs> one thing I need to say about love, love is, love can be dangerous, love can be absolute peace, love can be absolute you know, harmony, love can be disgusting, love can be, you know, so many different things. That's the thing about love. Love isn't always just pure, you know? And um, it just all depends on the person because love can make you, drive you crazy, you know? You know, yes. so many different things when it comes to love. So 
be careful with what love you want. Don't just ask for love. Be specific about the love that you actually want because there's people that, you know, can really go crazy over it, you know, and lose their minds over it. So you just have to just be specific. Don't rush into anything. I suggest nobody rush into anything, you know. Don't rush in. And it's like <clears throat> what I would say when it comes to a lot of um, – just people in general, I would say mostly, mainly females, like they'll see all the red flags, but they'll just continue to go through it anyway. And uh, that's one thing as a logical male, male brain, I don't understand. Cause like, if you see all these imperfections, you know, it's like the person, the, the dude may not even look good, but these girls would just go for the nigga anyway. Cause we thought we were that like, flag. And it just don't make no sense. It's like, yo, this dude don't even look good. He don't really got nothing going on. He ain't never do nothing in his life. He ain't got no status. Then why are you so gung ho about like fighting for this dude that really is playing you like a banjo? You know? Right. Right. And I've seen that countless many, plenty of times. And I've been around like, obviously every man has been around women all their lives, but I've been around women all my life. You know? And so I've seen the the pattern. It's just like these people don't be worth it. But they be giving all the time and day. It just don't yeah. make no sense. That's like you like you think you walk in the room, you this way to be talking about this dude. You look at a dude like, damn, that's what he look like, and this is what you tripping over. <laughs> yeah, you know, like not everybody can look, you know. Okay. You know, all right. Like super yes. you know, on both ends. I'm just saying on both ends. I'm not trying to be that person. All right. But I know what I I know what I got in store. You know. Mm -hmm. but the thing is that it's just like don't be doing that. Like. Love yourself. Yeah. Make sure you take care of yourself first. You yeah. know? And somebody put in the chat, you got to know your non-negotiables. Yeah. And also, if you have too many non-negotiables, you find yourself <laughs> being sad and lonely. And you ain't never going to find that right person because there ain't no perfect man. I'm not a perfect man. You're not going to ever find no perfect man in this world. You're always going to find something that you may not like about a person. Like, when it comes to most guys like me, they're mostly fuck boys. Majority of the time. I don't know. I'm just saying that. Majority of the, Why majority, do you feel like that? No, I'm just saying majority of the time. Like, there's, there's, like, there's some, a lot of the times it's like that. The thing is, you got to really find somebody. And it so happened to have my background. So happened to, happened to uh, ground me the way I am, you know? So where, like, it's suitable for my wife. It's suitable for me. I enjoy, you know, being this way because of my background. It's all about how you're raised, you know? So, yeah. That's true. Yeah. So, um, what do you guys think about marriage couples counseling or marriage counseling? Oh, marriage counseling. Um, I think it's actually a, it's a good idea for those that might want to do it. I think even people who feel like everything's good, sometimes it's good to sit down and, and talk about things sometimes with the counselor, just because, I mean, especially if you feel like it's worth working on, if you have something going on in your relationship, then by all means, do the counseling. It's okay to talk to somebody who may not know you, but just hear both perspectives and see what they could help with, like, do it. Mm -hmm. I did this. I don't see anything wrong with it. What do you think? No, there's something wrong with marriage counseling. Um... Uh, it's not nothing that you came out on your own. I mean, you do want to pay pay someone to uh, just listen to you and just say, mm -hmm, okay, and give you the obvious. I mean, that's what all counselors do. They give you the obvious, but the time is, is that they only, they're not receptive to their partner, you know, and really listening to it. They won't, they hear it from somebody else on the outside. They're like, oh my gosh, it made our relationship so much better. Well, some counselors give you like the tools to work through certain things and help you see it from a different perspective. Yeah, they may see you a different perspective, but also it's like you got to think about it. Those counselors are human too. They're all, they're dealing with their same the same issues. They yeah. need, the counselor needs counseling too. So the thing is, it's just all about like learning from what others do and just try not to mimic that same pattern. You know, that's how I see it. Okay. It depends on the person. It depends yeah. on the couple. It does. It depends on a lot of factors. But um, they have the education, so they know a little bit more than we know. Um, no so is there any... Huh? I only know through experience. 
True. That's how you get wisdom. That's very true. Experience does bring wisdom. Mm -hmm. Um, is there anything else? Are there any questions out there? Anybody else wants to ask? Is there anything else y'all want to tap on while we on here? Somebody said there's a difference between non-negotiables and preference, and I agree. I totally agree with that. Because some people, all their non-negotiables are like, oh, he must be 6'5", and he must be this. And I'm like, girl, yeah, well, five they, foot one. I don't See, the thing is, is that, like, I don't like that because of, like, okay. Oh, you know, we're in the era of just like people being so like you gotta have this you gotta do that you gotta be this you gotta be this you gotta be this height it's like when you look like a i'm just saying overall i'm not pointing at anybody i'm like you can't ask for all these things when you look like a two but you're asking for a 10 you know mm -hmm. you just gotta be realistic with yourself you know okay That's Kevin, all I'm Huh? Do you hear him? Do you hear okay. him? Kevin I mean, Samuels? I mean, but it's, I mean, I, oh I mean, Kevin Samuels, I mean, he wasn't, I mean, rest in peace, Kevin Samuels at the end of the day, you know, but, you know, it's just, it just only makes sense. It's like having a, as a man, having a logical brain, it just only makes sense. It's like anybody knows who is attractive, right? Mm -hmm. It's not. There's no. There's not. So, no. Beauty situation. is in the eye know. of the beholder. Yeah, that's true too. There's beauty in the eye of the beholder. But like, people know. It's like, <laughs> people know. Okay. So it's just like it's just all about like, just being open. You know, mm -hmm. and, and spreading your way, your value of how you may look, may look at people as looks, or you gotta be this high. You may find somebody that's maybe five eight. You know, but may be that one for you. Just right. being six foot doesn't mean that like, you know, you're losing out. Gotta be real. You know? like, so know. that's all I'm saying. Okay. So um, someone else said, what was it like learning your different parenting styles and did you learn more about each other through the process of parenting? Ayo, hey, you mean? Different parenting styles. Who is the disciplinary? I already know the answer, but I just want to. It's, it's me. <laughs> And it's not even, and it's not even, first of all, as far as discipline goes, I don't even like, I don't whoop my kids. And I, and there's not even anything against people that give their kids spankings. I'm not saying that because I have done the pat pats and the pop pops. Like, it, I just don't do the whole, like, you know, take off my belt, do it, like, you know. But as far as discipline, like, I, you know, I'm the one to speak up and say, like, you know, give them that stern. You know, you know better. Like I'm that parent, okay? Mm -hmm. So even when Carnell does it, it comes off a little different. <laughs> like his more like, what are you doing, girl? You don't do that. Every time you do it, it's right. <laughs> I scream. <agree. laughs> good. What are you doing? And for me, it's like I have two girls. I'm not supposed to be all extra with them, you know. It's no, it's not that you're. It's just that I. I don't know. It's just I. He's just a little different when it comes to that part. But for me, yeah. they have a soft spot in his heart. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Like, they're my daughters. I'm not going to be like going crazy on them. Like, I came up from a different childhood. Trust me. Like, if you've seen the childhood I came up from, it would have not been like, it's like boot camp, military school. You know, I was in boot camp. You know, that's like, that's, 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 I was in boot camp. That's, that's like pain to pain. I was raised like a real tradi traditional old school black family. Yeah. You, start wrong, you get take that switch off the tree, sitting chorus, spoons, mm. all that. So it's just like the thing is, is that like as a millennial, you don't want to have your kids raised in that same type of way. You know, keep in mind, like that's most black families, you know, and that comes from like generations and generations of, you know, slavery, of self-hate. That's the reason why that stuff happened. That's the reason why they're so easy to whoop the hell out of their kids, wait till they get in the shower, to get them out of the shower and start whooping them, pop, 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 and while the water's still on. Like that stuff happens because of, you know, <laughs> mindsets. Desiree's face is sending me. No, but I'm being dead serious. Like <laughs> We I, know I, you I, are. She was raised by her grandmother. So like, obviously she had no experience of that because of when she came no, in, I had she was way, she, they were way older. You know how like grandparents, parents, but as I, they get older, 
they get softer and they get become more nice. And you're like, dang, when I was a kid growing up, I got tore up. But you, you getting everything. You know, that's just what it is like. You know, that's what it is for the older generation. That's what they used to, mm -hmm. you know, did. But as far as race, discipline may be different, but it was still yeah. discipline. Uh, discipline. Right. right. Yeah. Now, as, as far as us growing up, discipline was different, but together with our kids it's the same like we're, we agree upon how we go about things we don't and plus like aoki's a really good kid like she's she's getting older so she's going through her like you know school stuff and whatnot but other than that it's not like it's not like she, she is not a bad kid she's not a bad kid so it's not anything that i have to really yeah. do, you know now you me we gonna see about you me <laughs> uh, <Yumi. laughs> Uh, Yumi is Yumi's. still one going on too soon, but, yeah, but she's different. We're gonna see. All I can say is she's different, and that's definitely, uh, it's that next child. Like, I'm saying, I was the second child, some second I was ones, different. and them second ones, boy, is different. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta kind of, they just got a mind of they own. <laughs> <laughs> they do, yeah, they don't care what you're saying. Yeah, look how different I am from my brothers. I was just on my own. I was on my own planet by myself, child. <laughs> so, and you laugh because you know it's true, girl. Couldn't be no secular music on. Uh -huh. I couldn't even listen to the B5 album. I had to go to Desiree House to sneak it. <laughs> they weren't talking about nothing. I couldn't go to the concert. That was still too much. That was still too much. <laughs> Be a teacher. That's funny. And yes, Sydney, I am the ultimate soldier all day, every day. Somebody asked a question about going to bed angry. What do you guys think about, like, do y'all resolve issues before you go to sleep or how to arguments? Mm -hmm. Well, no, for the most part, we kind of we resolve them before we go to sleep. Um, I say back in the day, it wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll go to sleep because we're gonna go to sleep and wake up, man. I'm like, how do you do that? <laughs> like, how do you wake up, man? That's it's like you need no sleep that, that way. I was younger, but yeah, uh -huh. you go to sleep, sleep like this and wake up. I mean, that's right. That's right. That's right. To sleep with her makeup on and have literally crying marks uh, oh, all over her pillow sheets. I'm like, girl, why are you, what are you doing? Like, what all you right, that was before I really cared about skin, mm -hmm. yeah. but um. <laughs> But first of all, I don't do that no more. Obviously, no. Yeah, that was and like I said, within our other conversation, like so the last three you? years have been better. Like, no, we, we did have, like I said, a lot of downs, but we stayed, we held it through. But yeah, you, as far as resolving That's anything, like strong. yeah, like I think as far as resolving anything, yeah, for the most part, we don't stay mad long now. We're getting older. We have a disagreement about anything. We disagree. We have our little, you know, back and forth, but it's more so like conversation. Yeah, and then I it's love like, that. It's we get over it. Then we're just like, whatever, you know? Then he's like the type to just be like, he come give me a hug and he just be like, okay, girl, like, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> calm down, it's not this serious. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be like, all right, like, it's really not, but whatever, like, so, but no, we don't, we don't really argue like that. But yeah, I say back then, not, yeah, it's a growth thing. I think yeah. when you're mature, though, yeah, you should not go to bed mad at each other. Right. You should or not. holding on to stuff, yeah. You shouldn't walk out the door mad. Yeah, because anything can happen to you, and mm -hmm. then you'll have to live with that. So I believe in – I'm a happy person, so I ain't going to be mad for long. But don't yeah. bring that up on me from two years ago. Like, that's going to make me mad. But, exactly. yeah. <laughs> and you never know. Like, I can go out the door and get hit by a bus. Like, exactly. you got that on your conscience for the rest of your life. You always have to make sure you keep stuff right with people. Exactly. And I believe in healthy conversation, too, because I believe two people can have a disagreement, but it's a healthy way to do it without name calling or screaming or storming out the door. Like, those type of things don't create a healthy environment to have a disagreement. And then it makes the other partner kind of, like, on edge to ever yeah. say anything again. I will say, like, we are, we don't cuss at each other. Yeah, we don't, someone we said, <laughs> any more children to come, and would you want boys or even adoption? I don't want adoption. Um, mm -hmm. We definitely want to get a surrogate for a boy so we won't have to, like, um, like you know, cry because, I don't know, we already have two girls. I don't want to be like, 
Kobe Bryant, keep trying and that's the way to do it. You just keep you having girls. You have to keep having girls. I would say, like, um, I just can't even do it physically myself anymore. I will say, I, I mean, it it could happen, but for my, um, just for my body, because, like, I do have, like, some sort of autoimmune that I don't know exactly which one yet. I know it's not lupus and stuff like that, but um, it did wear and tear on my body after having uni. So, like, I started getting, like, joint pains and all kinds of things like that. So I was like, I don't know that my body can, you know, and then I'm getting, not that I'm old, but you're, I'm getting older. I don't know what my body can handle past a certain point. And I'm not looking at having another one right now anyway, because we just, we only have like, our youngest is only going on too soon. So it would be some, it would definitely have to be um, under the circumstance of having a surrogate um, and, and also being able to implant a boy. Yeah. Cause Cause that's, right, that. Otherwise it's just no point, you know, then otherwise we won't, but yeah. Is that costly? Very. Ooh. So it'll be later. We need some layaway <laughs> Kmart discount. Or something. I mean, it'll be later anyways yeah. because we don't want them kid right now. I right, right. One, so. Yeah, yeah. It'll be it'll be later either way, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So career wise, what's next for y'all? Um, continuing the uh, YouTube. Growing that and growing um, Aoki's page, um, uh, me recording music and getting back into that, and you know, Desiree has her own business, so that's her career. You know, that's the path that she wanted. So, just continuing what we're already doing. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I will say, like for me, I keep saying that. For me, I want to grow my business and end up having like um, something where people can rent out rooms like one of those type of things um like events I'm, event space or like salon uh, i wanted like a um so here here's my idea i'm gonna have like my own like beauty aesthetics type place for people to come in do lashes so i wanted to do it like under my own brand but I'm kind of thinking that, like, because where I'm working right now, it's like a, it's a solo salon, and you just, everybody gets individual suites. That's a really smart investment. Yeah, I might want to do that instead. Yeah. But I still kind of want to have something under me, like, people that, just because, like, I just want a brand where people can come and, like, get all their beauty needs. You yeah. know, not so much of a spa, but a place, you know, you can go get your makeup done, your hair done, your, your lashes done, your brows, your, like the stuff that's like, I need that today. I need that for tomorrow. Like, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to do. Just grow in that way. Okay. But also, yes, YouTube. We're, our YouTube is definitely something we're focusing on now. Honey Gang. Our opening gang. up to everybody. Huh? Yeah. I say Honey Gang, Honey Gang. What honey Gang. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're not subscribed, please do. Please go and subscribe to Honey Gang. That is our family channel on youtube and we are uh we're up and running good yeah we're up and running we gotta post another one uh soon mm -hmm. so it's been like a few it's days. in the works it's been like a week or so we're trying to bring so y'all better right. content too like we like vlogs and stuff and i know a lot of people enjoy vlogs but we want more content to, to just with purpose a little yeah, bit more purpose. yeah we haven't got any suggestions on we uh, need Matter of fact, we haven't yeah. got any suggestions on Honey Gang. That's the reason why we don't know. Like, give us a good challenge, do, dude. But there hasn't been. Mm. It's, it's we want been, a good challenge. It's just always been like y'all ain't did the little index card challenge yet. Oh, that TikTok that. one. <laughs> no, we didn't did it. We didn't do that. I feel like we did something like that. The TikTok one where they're like pick a card and one of, it's like a cute thing, whatever. Oh, oh see, but that's that's a quick. That's a quick like. That's a. That's, that's a not even like a. You know, that's a TikTok. That's a. TikTok. So you want to do like. Long, like a, a long content, like an hour, 30 minutes or something, like episodes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, also, those are hour, 30, hour, I like an hour vlog. Hour vlogs take a lot of content. You guys just be doing a whole bunch of stuff and add that together. I know. I can't stand yeah. it. I hate, I can't, I can't, I can't keep up with none of that. But <laughs> somebody said relationship advice. No, some, relationship some advice. Suggestion. I'm, I'm, we're talking about suggestions when it comes to uh, that's, that's a, our, our YouTube. That's a YouTube suggestion. But that's a suggestion. Maybe you guys can be like, oh. y'all send me y'all problems and we'll mm -hmm. talk about them on the air with the both yeah. of y'all. Oh, sure. now the one, somebody said y'all should do the one chip challenge. Heck no, I'm not doing that. I've seen enough of that. that. I've seen plenty of people. You know, I've thing, seen enough of that. I'm scared. Their, I am scared. They'll what take is like it? a is little like thing. Have you heard of it? Did you, it's like a blue chip. 
and it's the hottest chip. I on. mean, honestly, oh, I people will bite it. the end off and be like, oh, I just like uh, two years ago. No, you, yeah, it probably go viral in one chip challenge. Go ahead, go do it so we can go. But back it's so bad. Challenge. It's so like, bad, and I, it's just, what kind of chemical is that? Yeah, because it, it's not a real natural heat. It's a fake synthetic heat. <laughs> So, it's terrible. Like it's I like the chocolate one. Yeah, like, so it's I not really it. coming from you know, it's not coming in natural heat. That's which why it burns so long. Like even when people just put it in their mouth and spit it out, here. it just holds the heat in there. Flavored chapstick challenge. Or the what Pringles. is that? Now, now the Pringle one. Are we talking about the one Pringle one? I don't know that we're gonna do the Pringle one. Pringle. I don't know. I'm so old. <laughs> I don't know what none of these challenges are. I don't be on social media. I don't watch TV. I be in the bubble. <laughs> We trying. I'm trying to get into the whole like, yeah, like trying to see because like it's been a minute. Like I used to watch YouTube channels a lot more. Like, my sister got me on a lot of them, so we would just sit down and watch YouTube. But then I like kind of just stopped, and then I had to check back. I'm like, what? What are they up to? Because like, you imagine, know. imagine if TikTok was around when we used to be recording all our dance videos and dancing to Beyonce. <laughs> it's crazy. I wish. I wish that stuff was around back then. Oh my god! Dance all those challenges. I ain't doing that again. What kind? A dance challenge like. That. People love that, Carnell. Yeah, because Carnell can dance. Did one, I already did once before, so I'm just like. I get bored of doing the those repetitive thing. That's the reason why I like. We gotta throw I'll, them in the mix I'll every now. I'll do something and I just won't do it no more. You know. Uh, do do a family dance. All of y'all. Yeah, him and Aoki was supposed to do one. Yeah, we're supposed to do one. Aoki be dancing. It took so long. <laughs> yeah, Alicia, I'm not familiar either. I'm old. Um, who be singing? Does Ray be singing? Y'all do a duet or something? <laughs> no. You. Me and Desiree, you shout, shout out to Juwan and Aisha. I used to. Tiffany, I mean, oh, Juwan and Tiffany. They, they're the dope. I feel like they're the dopest duet girl, girl and guy. I mean, girl, yeah, girl and guy um, duet right now. God, the best. Wow, I need to look them up. Juwan and Tiffany. This Remember is Juwan, Tiffany? Juwan Harris and Tiffany Evans. I Tiffany mean. Evans, Promise Free. Yes. And Juwan. Uh, oh, say it again. Hell. Well, wait, I, your phone you went caught out. it. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm never doing it again. I didn't hear it. The phone went he, out. He sang the key song. She didn't hear it. it, it he, like, you do it. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> you sang it. Do you talking about that promise song, that promise ring song? She did promise yeah. ring, yeah. Oh, she got a new song. Oh, yeah, her and her yeah, boyfriend. Yeah, her and Juwan. Uh, they're both singers, but they, they formed a group. Yeah. Oh, cute! Like that twenty eighty. It sounds so good. Oh, it's like I can. Tell I love. Shanae Aiko and Big Sean. Say what? Then Shanae Aiko and Big Sean they got twenty twenty eighty eight or twenty. Yeah, I like I yeah. like I like twenty eighty eight, but I like honestly John and Tiffany a lot. I'm gonna have to look them up because I don't up. I don't listen to music. Fall in love with I mean, Big Sean's not a singer. He just is gonna rap. Mm -hmm. you know, he's so, still got vibes. They yeah, I mean vibes. it's a vibe, but like I'm, he's a talker. I like, I like, you know, I like. I don't know. I mean, you don't really hear girly guys mm -mm. singing together and make it sound like, damn, this is a, that. Oh, it's a know? vibe for real. It's yeah. real R and B. I don't care what nobody say. They keep on trying to say it. It's gone. No. Nah. Okay, I'm about to put it on tonight so I can close out. Put it on the night. Yeah. It's Dewan <laughs> X Tiffany. Okay, that's Valentine's Day playlist right there. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Well, I guess people gave y'all some suggestions. Um, the behind the scenes work day. Yes. So um, a little bit, but I could do a say? more in depth behind the scenes work day. Oh yes, that'll be good too. So the day in the life of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. That is a good one. Because people are interested to see what you got going on. Yeah. I just don't have time to set the camera up. Oh, <laughs> date night. Date night. I can't set the camera up. I just it, We had a date night somewhat in one of our videos, a little a little portion of it. Yeah. It was in a vlog, so it wasn't, like, dedicated to only that moment. A lot of stuff are actually, like, so if y'all see, like, the title star videos, a lot of stuff is actually in those videos other than just what's the title. Okay. It's vlogs. Yeah. So it's just a bunch of other stuff going on, but we, but it's pieced in there, you know. Okay. Well, I hope you guys can get that up and going with new suggestions. I'm sure people will flood y'all inbox for suggestions. Y'all should do that couples advice thing, because I can send y'all a whole bunch of questions right now. Well, and then give y'all some. Yeah, some yeah, why not? 
Why not? Because people fun. like to hear two different perspectives from the man and the woman, and y'all both think differently. So that would be something good. Yeah. See, the thing is, y'all are. I give the real. You know, we ain't I'm ready for the real. <laughs> Yeah. I'm always gonna be the real realist in this situation. I ain't gonna give y'all smoke and mirrors and fake, you know, dreams. And, and who all. you think giving fake dreams? You you the one shade? No, 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 no. I'm just saying like yeah. Possibly, yeah. I saw that earlier. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. And then they also said they weren't making a suggestion. They were asking what your most memorable date was. <laughs> oh. Memorable date. What's our most memorable date? Well, we'll, you say that. we'll leave that for the eat. Yeah. <laughs> that means you got a new one coming up. <laughs> oh, this ain't going to be real though. How deep Brian with his, his podcast. Yeah, Brian's podcast is real, and th and guess what? That's not even all of it. That's gonna be a document. Good, good. I'm happy to see everyone's doing good. You and all your brothers are successful. Thank you guys for joining Clean the Business tonight and chatting with me. Um, Thank you for having us. Yes. Yes. Please. This was actually very fun, and I know it was. It was I'm a glad good we got idea. to finally have that moment tell our story i know and it's such a beautiful story and thank you guys for allowing me to be a part of your story from of however course. years ago to now you like, started you been in it <laughs> i appreciate that because you know you you grow and you glow up with people and y'all see me glow up i see y'all glow up and i mean carnell was already glued up when i met him when i met him but anyways i see y'all marriage prosper and i always look up to y'all because i love when young people stay true to who they are and they stay together because it's so many things that in this world that can come and tear people apart but y'all always stuck together and made sure that y'all was had each other's back and i love that and you know it's gonna happen for me so i ain't even worried <laughs> Yeah, it's, it is. Yeah, yeah, thank you guys. So y'all yeah. enjoy the rest of y'all Valentine's Day. Any alibis, anything else y'all want to say? Any shout outs? Y'all good? You got anything? Why are you putting at me? You too. No, I, don't have, I don't have anything else. <laughs> you put it on YouTube. I'm good. I don't, I don't have much else. <laughs> thank you, Carnell. Yes, you no problem. No problem. I love you guys. And y'all have a good time. Thank you, girls. Thank you for having us. We had a good time. I hope everybody yes. did too. Yes, they did. And, and don't don't forget subscribe. subscribe yes, go subscribe. Honey subscribe. If you and I, honey gang. Yes, sir. My mom said y'all have a beautiful real love story. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. you. <laughs> she's seen it too. I know she's seen it. She was there when I was crazy. Crazy girl. <laughs> bringing that music over. I said, I've been bringing the Beat Live album. <laughs> The album was not even like crazy, so it wasn't. But you know, it just at that time, it was too much. <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right, guys. But well, I will see y'all right. later. Enjoy. All your right. Day. All right. Happy Valentine's Day. Bye. Bye.